Hi everybody, in one of my last videos I introduced this 12 centuries in 12 months project which I am doing having been inspired by Stian who tweeted about it and I haven't stopped thinking about it since. In that video I said if people wanted to see how I set this up I'd film one and um, there was a request so I thought I would film it before I do my January update which will be the next video that you see. I've been keeping a list of things that I've realised what's doing it and I'm really excited to show you that but I thought we'll just start off by setting this up first. Reminder of what the page looked like, I am just going to show you how I set this up in my demo space which I have for doing the other videos I do for capacities um, but I figured it's better to see how to set it up from scratch including like the maps of content object types as well. So let's head over into the demo space. Now I already had a map of content object type set up. I don't have one in here. So to set one up I'm clicking add new type and I'm creating my own. Let's give it an icon of a map and I'm going to give it green because that has map energy. So that's now set up in its basic form and that allows me to do what I initially want to do which is create a bunch of them. So I've got the structure which is going to go in my page but the question is where do we sort of build this hub? Up to you where but I just used a page. So I've opened the command palette, I'm going to type page, I chose a page because I don't want properties in the way. This page which is collecting things doesn't need to have properties where I think the maps of content do so I am um, just going to do it like this. So I have my page and now what I initially want to do is set up each of the 12 centuries. The way that I am going to do that is by just a handy little trick which I do all of the time and which is now a lot faster because of bulk actions which have just launched. I did this like just before bulk actions so I did it sort of one by one so if you are following along with this it will be slightly easier now. So I've got like 12 blocks here. I'm going to highlight them and then this new um, panel comes up and what I'm going to do is click this turn into and what I can do is scroll down and turn them into 12 separate maps of content. Now I've just thought two steps ahead. Highlight them and copy them. We'll come back to why in a moment. So I've copied that. I'm going back to this I'm clicking and I've clicked to turn in 12 maps of content. So they're all there. Now what I want to do is create a block above here. I'm going to do shift and click on that and that creates a block on top. And I'm going to paste those exact same blocks again because I want every map of content to have a tag associated with it. So I'm going to do turn blocks into tags this time. And there we go. Now. I don't want the tags in here, I want the tags to be associated with their maps of content. So what you can do now that the tags are created is just highlight them again, click backspace and remove them from this page and then I just need to do, I just need to open each map of content which is kind of done for me because they embedded themselves um, and just add the tags one by one. So I'll zoom through that because that will be boring. Okay, so now each map of content has a tag associated with it. Now, I went 25 years of life thinking that centuries began in like 900 or 800. They don't. They start in 801 or 901. And even though I've now learnt that, I'm still getting a little bit confused with the dates and the centuries because it just seems that if I come across a number, my brain's like, whoa, I don't know how to do that. So what I'm going to do is open up my map of content settings and I'm going to add a text property called dates. It's just a space for me to help my little brain out. The reason I'm doing this now is because I've still got the embed view open and any properties that I add now I can edit right here in this page and it just helps me get into the flow a little bit more. So I am indeed checking I've got them right here. So I've got the dates there. Um, another thing that I added to my maps of content was something to help me travel between the maps of content a little bit more easily by adding a property of like the following century and then when I was doing my tour I realised I should have done one for the century previous and the way that I would do that is again open up the object settings and what I want to do is add a single select property. I have a whole video about single select and multi-select properties which I'll link to. Um, 
I'm just going to call this followed by and what I want to follow is a map of content. So I'll apply those changes and then while I'm here I will add another single select called preceded by, not that I can ever spell that, preceded by another map of content and then that has applied two more properties and I open this and I will click 10th century, 11th century and so on and so forth and I'll show you what this does in practice um, shortly. So some of them are going to be empty because of sort of the parameters of this challenge so I'm changing the visibility to hide when empty and that just keeps things a bit tidier. To show you what this is like in practice, if I open up my map of content, I now have a tag. I'll talk about the tag in a moment. The dates to remind myself when I forget. And I can quickly scroll through each of the centuries just because of that followed by. There's no searching. The command bar is incredibly fast and I use it all of the time. But you can't deny that clicking something that is just there is faster than opening a shortcut and typing. So I thought that was good. But in reality, it probably won't be that useful until I'm reviewing everything at the end, like look at everything I've done, which is, I'm already excited for December for that matter. So the information that I require and the navigation that I require is here. Something that I personally wanted literally just for the aesthetics because I knew I was going to be putting um, these links in as small cards was I wanted them to have a cover image. The way that you can do that is click add property. I always type to refine the search, add cover image, that's all set up. And all I did was ask Google for like a picture of each of the centuries. Obviously the picture can't depict an entire century, but you could do that if you wanted to. I, for the sake of time, won't do that because we'll be here a while, but that's kind of the main structure that I wanted to put in. What I'm going to do now is highlight each of these things. So I've just clicked and dragged and again because my microphone is right here I can't really see and I'm just going to use shift and the down arrow to select those 12 blocks again. I'm going to open up the panel. You can use command shift E to do that more quickly and then I'm going to change the view to small card and that creates me a long list of them. I want them to be in a three by four layout. Um, so what I'm going to do first, because I want them to be a unit, is group them. So I did that with command G. And then now I'm going to start dragging them around. Just keeping them in this group is more useful for what I'm going to do next, which is begin with columns. So I'm just dragging until that vertical line pops up. And there we go. That's good. Now, two things here. I do not need to see both the title and the tag because they obviously say the same thing. I'm going to click on these three dots. I'm going to go to customize card view and I'm going to uncross tags. The reason I have tags and the reason I am doing this right now called 12 in 12 is tags are the most useful collection tool that live in capacities and that probably isn't the best way to phrase it because we also have collections but in the sense that every single object type regardless of when or who created it whether it was capacities the app or you every object can be tagged and that means that it's a remarkably useful organizational feature and because they can be embedded and because of tag queries which are launching very very soon for paid users you can do a lot with them. So having that tag set up in, you know, as what felt as quick a way as it was to set up as I just showed, um, it's just really useful. You can tag all the books you've read with 9th century or perhaps a PDF, for example, whereas you can't always reference 9th century because only certain, um, only certain object types have these blocks. So you know, this this is the core organisational things. Everything I learn about the ninth century will be accessible here. And then I can click through to see what I've learned about everything else. And this is where I'm organising myself. So the question that I asked myself and the question I recommend you ask yourself if you're making a project page at all is what do you actually need to see in front of you? What will you forget if it's not in front of you? What's just even handy to have? I personally decided that having eras run kind of in parallel to this would be useful because as I touched on in that video, centuries are a very useful block of time um, to help, you know, navigate this this project. 
but they are not that helpful in the terms of the study of history. History didn't care what year it was or how close they were to the end of the century. Things just happened and therefore considering eras alongside centuries is really important. So to physically put in this idea of considering eras alongside centuries, I did something quite simple and created a toggle forward slash one, creates heading one, add a toggle through space and then I'm going to select this block and move it to the end of this group and this is the reason I added a group. This obviously makes things look a little bit um, squashed so click wide layout and I will move that over later. I'm going to call this block era. Now in hindsight there are like two eras I've looked at in, in the most depth so we had the Islamic golden age and and the Viking Age. So I have two blocks there. I'm going back to what I did at the beginning of the video and I'm going to turn those blocks into maps of content. The dates that were given for the Islamic Golden Age in the source that I was reviewing looks like between 550 and 750. So they're there and they're just there to remind me, like their point is to remind me that they, I need to keep considering them. So I'm just turning them into small cards and that's there for me. What else did I want to consider? I wanted to remember the sources I have to help me. So I'm going to add, I'll add a few blocks above actually. Um, let's add another toggle. By the way, you can do this um, in a few ways. So I typically do slash and one, but if you just start with whatever symbol that is, and then do a hashtag space that will also change the size. Um, let's call it sources. And then I'm using Wondrium. So there are three sources there. I'm going to turn these two again with my favorite trick. I use this more times in a day than you would expect. Let's turn them into small cards. And then we'll go to get the link for Wondrium. So I've, what I did there was I got the link and I pasted it over that word and it is telling me and it's asking how I want to embed it. I will embed it as a wide card and that will also add something to my web link um, object type, which is nice. And I'll put that beneath there, drag that over there and all of that is in my source box there. Then what I personally did was wrote down what why I was doing this. So I've copied that text and the credit from Stian. That's just plain text now and I'll show you how I made it look as I did. So the first thing that I did is I selected the blocks that had my aim and scope in and I put them in bold by Control B. Control G put them into a group and then I wanted to introduce some colour into this page because I really like the capacities colours. There, that opens up the menu and I went for Fuchsia. So that was at the top. Um, I put the link to Stian's um, video there and just to keep this tidy, I added another toggle with my favorite little shortcut and that was there. Again, I decided to color in the back of sources. So let's do that in blue. I'm sure this doesn't look good to people with an eye for design, but I'm not one of those people. I then highlighted that and added some colour and I don't think I added any colour to the errors. And then I did add in a cover image from ChatGPT and this picture which I felt was doing a pretty good job of explaining what I meant by centuries and therefore sort of the boundary between these waves being the lens through which we view some stuff happening behind the scenes. It seemed to go a bit more dramatic than I meant it to but I actually thought I would never have come up with that myself, so I liked it. And then I was just clicking and dragging the blocks around until it looked reasonable for my liking. I think actually today I'll put these eras here because um, I haven't actually done too much with the eras yet, which is something I can update on in the video. But there is kind of this page. I have what I want to do, some visual cues to help me do it, some sources to remember to look at because I will forget. Um, 
the understanding that eras and centuries are happening at the same time and I now have a place to discuss what all of these things are doing. I have just realised that I want my small cards to show the dates of these things which I think is useful. Yes, that works very nicely for me. Um, the other thing that I personally did was when I was kind of working out how I wanted to put this into structure, I created another um, toggle just like this. So I just created that by going to a previous one and clicking enter and I called it logistics. And this was essentially my scratch pad for working things out. So what do I want the structure to be? Why? It's basically like when I was at school doing a maths problem and showing my working. It's how I work with my systems and my notes and stuff. So that's what I did there. But you might not need that. Um, it's just how I like to do it because I think the thinking about using information and structuring information is as fun as taking notes because all of this is just the best. So that's that's basically it. The only thing that I would do is add the images in here, but that will take ages. So I, and I don't want to keep you any longer than I already have. That's how I set up a project page in Capacities. Hopefully there was some sort of power user tips and tricks in there for how you can navigate your space a bit faster or to hear maybe why I was making some of the decisions that I was. Um, obviously, if you have any questions or something wasn't clear, let me know and I can certainly help clarify. Thank you so much for watching and the next thing you'll see about this project is the update from January, which I'm really excited about because I've learned a lot. See you then. Bye.